Good morning and welcome to another week in our garden. Lovely overcast day, brilliant for painting which I'll be doing later on. But I've got quite a bit of work to do on these raspberries so I've left the painting for a little while to get these raspberries and strawberries sorted to start sorting them and then I'll just nip down now and again probably early in the morning and do some but the raspberries have got to be done I'll show you how we do it these are the floricanes they grow up like this this year and we tie them in and they fruit early in the year and these at the back if I can just move those out a bit these are the old canes what have cropped this year so now we need to cut those out and tie those in quite a job but it needs to be done as soon as possible really to get these new canes tied in these are the ones that I did earlier this morning you can see I've tied them up a bit of string there still to use that's how we need to finish up with a good mulch around the bottom and all the old canes cut out the tops we fold over like that for the winter and then in the spring we actually cut those tops off and then these will branch and produce a crop now I did have a double frame but it wasn't very successful so we've gone back to a single frame because you can pick the crop easier both sides that way there's no real easy way of taking them off what I normally do is I cut the string at the top it's only jute string it will snap if you give it a good pull but it's best to cut it off and then I cut it down in sections which is easier to to work with then these are beginning to shoot again not so they really they need to be out so I'll take these top bits off all the way along and see what we're doing then these will be go through the shredder and can go on the compost heap quite well and then take the string off this jute string it soon snaps take it all off keep it tidy the beauty with the jute string it doesn't really matter if it goes on the compost because it will rot I've actually added another bar at the top just to support the top to stop them waving about in the winter so we'll continue down and then I'll follow this one down and I'll show you how low we cut it at the bottom if I can still got a few raspberries on them look. All right, follow it down these off and I'll be able to show you what we do at the bottom just take that string out so this is the old cane here you can tell it's brown and it's it's old and it's got peeling bark on it just follow it all the way down to the bottom and take it off See that's the new growth actually come on it so we didn't really want that this this time we did. Another one here look. You see it? Take those out. All the old wood. And that should leave. Should leave just the new ones coming up that will tie in. I'll just finish off taking these few old canes out and then we'll start tying in. I'm using jute string but I've got it tangled. So we'll just untangle it. There you go. 
Now I'm only taking about a yard off at a time but I'm going to double it as I go because it seems a bit thin but it is strong enough to hold these just pour a knot in that and then we'll start tying in what I find is if you do the middle first and then you've got a lot of the canes out the way but as you go if the canes are getting too congested in one area you can move them to the sides like that like I can take those two over there let's get going so we should have a loose end we have to tie on to look. birds are singing for us this morning and then anything longer than that you'll have a job to pull it round and round so we take the longer ones first <coughs> I think there's some pollen about today as well <coughs> take them into place now you will lose a leaf or two so don't worry too much about that they will shed all the leaves soon anyway so if you go around a couple of times and then put a tie on it so if the string does break it will hold in that short area there you see Let's have a look what else we've got those can go on that bottom one that can go on the bottom one that can go on the bottom one so that's all this line from this side these will be on this line as you can see when I tie those in so we'll do that side next I'll tie the the string onto this side so we can continue and then we'll have a look what we've got. We've got quite a few here, look. So we can spread those, not that one. Spread the long canes. Quite a few of them, nose to it, that end. Yeah, that will do. As we go, we'll just go round the ones on the other side as well, won't it? And then we'll take these in. Put a little tie on that, look, we've got a loose end there, so we'll use it. You go around the cane and around the wood and back on like that. Then every second one you just put a knot in it. In case this breaks, then only this little bit of one sorting. So we'll get another one up. And we'll have those two together, I think and then we'll tie those off and we'll just put the tie in it just hold it there you go now we'll take the next don't worry about this when we tie it down there that will go in more like that you see so we don't worry about that we want that one that one and maybe that one there's three more to go on I might need a bit more string there you are. and then we carry on we'll go round two and then we'll tie off again just round and round if you didn't tie them in through the winter you'll have quite a mess because they'll fall all over the place and that one on there I think and that one on the end that, yeah we'll just put a tie on that as we come round
You could tie each one on a separate piece of string, but it'll take quite a while. But make sure you use string, try not to use wire. And then that one, I think, that one, and that one, we finished the line one. And we could tie it up. And tie it off. Exactly the same on this wire, holding these in. You see, that one will go on the next wire down. So we just take this wire, take all those in. So I'll cut some more string and I'll tie this one in and then I'll show you. Now, that's the sides tied in. Nice and sturdy for the winter winds, etc. Now we need to bend these tops over and tape it down with this one. They are quite supple, so just be brave and bend them. They will bend. We'll pull this one down for a start. Look. Then in the spring we take the string off and we cut those off at that level which will make these break for more fruit but they will, they will bend down not it looks a bit bit of a mess leaf wise but they, don't forget these leaves will fall off anyway and then those there will pick over like that that one is going to be long, so we're taking that way. Like that, perhaps another one that way, shall we? That one. Take that one that way. Yeah. And take those that way. And that one can go that way. Then I can tie off nicely at this end. So we can tie this off now. That's the raspberries tied in. These ones that are sticking out, these are side shoots coming off. So what we'll do, we'll weave those in. That one can just go in there. That one, just push it through. But winter will probably take these side shoots off anyway, they're not really woody enough. Now some of them aren't tight up to the frame, so I'm thinking, I can't dig them up now, they won't survive if we dig them up now. We can either leave them, dig them up in the spring, or leave them tied in for this season, but don't let anything else go past that line. There's the line there sort of thing. This one's just outside, but we'll leave it because it will, well, it is coming up to bear fruit for next season. So we'll leave that one. Next thing we do is just clean the, clean the bottom out. Make sure there's no perennial weeds in there. The leaves could stay in really because they will rot down but we'll put them on the compost heap instead. Now we're going to put a handful of bone meal in there as well. This is a slow release fertiliser so it'll release slowly through all the winter. Then when they need to pick it up in the spring it'll all be in the soil ready for them. Just the sprinkling in there. I'm not putting it too far out because I don't want those roots coming out and sending up more shoots. Now I'm going to put our own compost that from the compost bins in, not manure or anything, this is the compost we've actually made on site. But uh, it's, it's a good compost, it's nice and fibrous. 
but the, anything that's lacking the bone meal will make it up and just scatter that in So I'm not going to come out too far because I don't want the the roots spreading out. I want them to stay there where the compost is. Not a lot. We'll do this side and then I'll perhaps fetch it a little bit more for the other side. There you are. That's what we do to our floricanes at this time of year. Now these are Maling Juno and they crop very very well this year and each year there seems to be more canes coming up so over the years it progresses and get quite a, quite a heavy crop off. This side these are the primary canes as you can see they're just coming into fruit now when they finish fruiting unlike the floricanes that we cut out the old canes the primary canes when they finish fruiting cut the lot down and then do exactly the same a little bit of bone meal and some of our own compost on the bottom just to get them ready for the spring now while we're in the fruit cage and the sun's gone in I hope it doesn't rain because I want to paint today while we're in the fruit cage, I'll just show you what I do to the strawberries at this time of year. Now that they're finished and they're looking a bit tired, so we'll do it now. Can you see all these tops and there's leaves and all sorts in there lot? So what I do, I use the hand shears and just take them off, especially the runners. Make sure you get those off. I take the runners off at the same time. Now if you want to produce more plants then now is a good time to pot those runners up. Leave the pots on the soil and they'll root very quickly. Here we are. I'll just finish this row for you. And we're still getting strawberries, a bit small, but they would have been. They're still strawberries. Right, so go all the way down. Try and get all those old leaves off. I'll just get the bucket and put these in. Now, once I've chopped the tops off, I go down and try and take as much as the, the dead leaves, etc., out from in amongst the plants. You might get something like that, but that's finished now, so we broke it off, so it's had it. do each line separate so we're doing them all together and get all those leaves these that have got runners on I take them off as I said I don't really want any more plants but I want the plants we've got to do better. Now 
down the sides and between the strawberry plants a little bit of bone meal. Not a lot, you don't want massive growth on these. We'll give them a bigger dose of a balanced fertiliser in the spring to really wake them up. This will be just to strengthen them up for winter. Not a lot. Hey. They'll like that. Rake a little bit of the soil onto the plant. Try not to bury the plant but bring the soil up to it. Most of this between the rows is last year's compost that we put on. So we're literally just pulling that spent compost up onto it. Can you see? It's not, not burying them at all. I'll finish these off and then I'll come back to you when we put the compost on. What we'll do, we'll put the compost from the compost bins in. As you can see, it's the same compost we used on the raspberries. And there's no manure in there at all. I don't want manure, fresh or old, on the strawberries. Because if you have rain, it will splash up onto the fruits and you never know what's quite in that this we know what's in it manure i don't want manure on my strawberries so a little bit not the stone a little bit not and what i do is i just sprinkle it on that side finish it and then I'll show you what I do to finish. Not a lot because what you'll find is over the winter this will go into the centre trench anyway and in the spring we put more on. We just put a bit either side. Lovely compost. Just like that, that's plenty. Plenty on there. Then all I do is I just side it up to the plants because as you know the rain is going to wash it straight down again. But this just gives it a good start for those roots. And it actually makes it tidy for doing the next row. It looks a bit chopped at the moment, but within three or four weeks, it'll all be back to normal again with all new growth and new, row, new roots into that compost, making good strong plants for next year. Now, while we're in the fruit cage, I'll just show you how the blackberries are progressing. Now these flower a little bit later than most of the other things that we've lost this year. So we've got plenty of blackberries because the frost didn't get the flowers. Now as you can see these blackberries are fruiting very very well. If we could just show you the size of the berries that we're getting that's that's a fair size blackberry. In fact, we'll eat that one now. As you can see, there's a lot of them. So what we'll do is later in the day, we'll have to find an hour and come and pick some. The trouble with the blackberries, if you leave them too long, they get really, really mature and then you'll be inundated with flies picking at them 
and take it in the juice and then they'll go rotten and it spoils the crop so the best thing to do is as soon as they're ready get them up as you can see the flies are coming in already because they live here too and they want their share right that'll be about it for this week hope you've enjoyed it many many thanks for watching and thank you for subscribing we do appreciate it and hopefully we'll see you sometime next week bye now